What's up world, Mr. Magna Ragnarok here, welcome back to Let's Play Blue Dragon in the last video. We made it here to Talta Village, we got all the chests, we explored some of the houses here, and we fought some of the new enemies here as well. And in this video, we're going to find out what happened to the Talta Villagers, because we never really got an explanation in the last episode as to where they went or if they all just died. Grandpa's workshop. Yes, this is Fushir's workshop. You need to come in here in order to progress with the plot. Well, actually, I think this might be optional, but I'm not really sure. Shu, Jiro, Kluk. If you are reading this letter, know that we are all safe and sound. We have had to relocate because we can no longer live here. After taking you three away, the land shock returned to plague us for days without end, reducing our poor village to the state in which you now see it. In response, we have opted to move as a group to Gibral Castle Town. The feeling is that however long and hazardous the way there may be, it would still be preferable to living our days in constant terror of the land shark. We are following the coast road. If you find this letter, we look forward to seeing you there. All our hopes are with you. Push it up. Gibral. Moro doesn't know. Is it far? It's about three days by the coast road. I'm just relieved to hear that everybody's okay. Not so fast. Maybe they're not okay. The whole village moved. That means small kids and babies too, right? Yeah, that's right. Landon and his wife just had a baby girl. She can't be more than a month old. Three days might not be enough time. We gotta hurry! We gotta get going! He's right. We gotta go after them. What if something happens? Like a monster attacks them on the way there? Hold on. What for? Let's use the shortcut through the Valley of Murals. What? Are you serious? Yes. I don't think they'd want to go through the Valley of Murals. I think they would choose the Coast Road instead. How come? Because the murals in that valley are alive. It's said they attack and eat anyone who passes by. Traveling peddlers say the same thing. Though I've never seen it myself. Let's just go. We're wasting time talking about it. Well, at least we now know that the Tulsa villagers are safe. That's nice. That's nice. I do like how they gave some of the side characters in this game. I love how they gave them actual, like, they gave them names and they gave them their own personalities. Which we will see here soon. We will we'll see their personalities soon because I do find that interesting. This is one of the other mechanics of this game I really like. They gave the side characters their own personalities. Um, but anyways, in this video, viewers... We're not going to go after the Talta Villagers. Instead, we're going to fight an optional boss. And I can pretty much... You viewers can pretty much guess who, who that optional boss is. Just by looking at the screen right now. But keep in mind, this optional boss can be pretty tough. And I might be under-leveled for this. I I might be actually a little under level for this, but I'm still going to try anyways, because, come on, it's an optional boss. He can't be that tough, and of course, as soon as I say that now, I'm going to get my ass whooped to me, so let's just do it anyway. So let's go for it. <laughs> Are you feeling sick or something? Nah, I feel real good. Real good. Because tasty morsels like you strayed right into me. Wow. 
Introducing our first optional boss in the game, Mad Eye. Mad Eye here. He likes to do this attack a lot. Just saying. He can do endless summons. He likes to summon a lot of skeleton monsters and pretty much make your life horrible. Not really horrible, but you get what I'm going for. Anyways, Mad Eye here. Every time he does summon, he does go into defensive, and his defense percentage increased by 50%, so uh, physical attacks won't do too much to him, so just keep that in mind. Anyways, Mad Eye here. He's level 18. Well, he has 545 HP, 750 MP, and he is, unfortunately, he doesn't have any weaknesses, so you just gotta do your best to hit him with your strongest attacks. Alright. What are you gonna do, Mad Eye? Well, I gotta attack first before you can do anything. This should do some damage to those skeletons. Yeah, that hardly did a thing to him. And he has level 3 magic as well, so this might hurt a bit. You want to have your magic defense up by quite a bit. The monster is hardening his defense. When he does that, it means he's going to prepare another spell here soon. Which we don't want that to happen. Those guys are gone, and he is resistant to light, so don't even bother hitting him with light spells. Alright, have a taste of your own flare. Right back at you. Yeah, that hardly did a thing to him, so pretty much you have to mostly just physically attack this guy because it's you're hardly even going to get anywhere with the damage you're doing, magic-wise. Yes, alright, critical line. That will do a lot of damage to this guy. Alright, let's get one of, rid of one of you skeletons because having two is better than three. Aw, you didn't stun. Alright, watch her. You're gonna hit both Shu and Marmaro. Uh, well, that didn't hurt Shu, but that hurt Marmaro quite a bit. Uh, no, no. I'm just gonna heal this turn because Mad Eye, he can be pretty tough. You want to be careful in this fight. This shine should stun you, hopefully. Please be stunned. And you are! Awesome! Alright, those two are gonna be charging. He's gonna hit Cloak with Winda. Anyway, sorry about that. I got interrupted there slightly, viewers. Anyways, we'll hit this skeleton with shine. Hit you with shine sword because I don't want you to attack at all. That purple, uh, that other purple skeleton might attack me, but I hope he doesn't. I hope Marmaro can kill him here. Okay, well, he didn't die, but he was stunned for a good bit. That's nice. I'll take it. <laughs> Alright, um... Wow, what to do, what to do. You know what? I'll hit you with shine. Alright. Ground, uh... Alright. So pretty much, you see the pattern he's doing right now. He used basically the four elemental spells already. He's used Flara, Wadra, Winda, and now he just used Grounda. 
So pretty much what he's going to do next on his next turn, he's going to charge. He might actually do it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Zephyr just in case. And I'll use Shine Sword, give her that last purple skeleton there. Alright, final summons. Okay, this is the last summons he's going to do here. Once you get rid of three of these summon waves, that's when he's going to stop defending himself. Because he'll practically be exposed from then on. Hit you with water. Actually, crap, I probably should have used Shine of Sword. Yeah, I probably should have done Shine of Sword. That probably would have been much better, but too late now. Actually, wait. Can I hit all of you with Winda? That would be great. And I think I'm going to be able to, but not until after he does something with his turn. Alright, Mad Eye, what are you going to do? You're going to use Flara. All right. I get. Well, actually, I think if you don't take out the summons in time after he's used his four elemental spells, that's when he's going to use an attack called Tempest. What Tempest does, it's kind of a combination of all four of the attack elemental spells, but it does over a hundred points of damage, and it can nearly kill your party. That's why you want to be at around the same level as me as my party members or slightly above because this guy can be pretty troublesome okay good he oh hey he's even stunned all right well that's right since that was his last wave he's gonna stop defending from here on out so go nuts attack him have your physical fighters go nuts with this guy now because he's completely exposed himself. Alright, Mad Eye, you're gonna take a lot of damage from this. Hmm. I'll let you with Shine just in case. See if I can stun you. And indeed I did. Awesome. That is awesome. Okay, Shu, you're going to defend. And Jiro, you're going to use Zephyr to heal everyone. Just in case this guy tries something pretty fishy, he may, he may not be able to because he might die after this one hit right here. Nope, he still has a little bit more. But he might actually die from this one Flara. Or not, he could just barely live. Alright, he's gonna hit Shu with Winda, but since Shu's defending himself, he shouldn't take too much. Yeah, only 13. That, that's nothing. You got nothing on me. You're dead, Mad Eye. Alrighty, well, that was it for Mad Eye. That was it for our first op optional boss in the game. We get a lot of gold and a lot of experience from that battle. Now here we have an inn. Yes, there is an inn here inside Talta Village. Someone help me! It's Peruto. Hey, shoot, you guys help me! I'm safe, thanks to you. That monster had me locked up. He imprisoned me and was attacking anyone who visited the village. Now he's gone, thanks to you. Thanks a million. It's not much of a thank you, but take this. Ordeal Earring. This is very good accessory for the ear. Will this benefit Shoe? It will, but what about the others? Nah. Nope. Alright, I'll give this to Marmaro since he has the lowest magic defense. Now, 
the reason why you want to stop that optional boss is to not only save Peruto, but to actually shop at his place. I'll do my best to keep business going by myself until the others return. Do you want to shop or we take a rest? Oh, uh, let's take a rest. Might as well. And we have so much gold, I just realized that. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how much gold I had. Okay, but yes, the reason why we're here is we want to buy spells. Now, Baruto has more spells than from the other shops. Like Heal Up, Poison, Deflect, and Sleep. Um... I'll go ahead and get my Cure Kaloan spell. And get Deflect. And I guess I'll get Heal Up as well. I'm not going to get the others, but I'll wait and get them later. Nope. And yes, pretty much Peruto's going to stay here until everyone from Talta Village returns. What a trooper! <laughs> Instead of just fleeing for his life to get out of the village while we're still here, he's just going to stay. boy, Peruto! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Yep, I know this is a pretty short episode, and we really didn't get too much progress done, except for just the optional boss fight, but I'd say that's a pretty good amount, to be fair. Anyway, so we're going to end things off here. So, next time on Let's Play Blue Dragon, we will head to the Muro Valley, and hopefully catch up with the rest of the villagers. So, see you guys then.